If you're starting a new Chrome extension project you and you haven't looked at Yeoman, you really want to check out Yeoman. And they have a generator for Chrome extension. If you go to that link that I just clicked on, and then right here, you'll see the Chrome extension generator. Now, I had a problem with the built-in official generator in that it didn't have support for grunt watch and in its grunt watch it has uh, the natural tasks for compiling your SAS and coffee script and I went ahead and did a fork of it and added in the support for the grunt watch and I also submitted a pull request, which is over here. Now, at the end of the day, the pull request I closed because there was a debate about the generated files, the JS and CSS files that are generated. I left them in the main directory, the main app directory, app scripts and app styles, which we'll see in just a few minutes. And the maintainer of the generator wanted to keep them in the .temp directories, which is much cleaner and stays out of your source control by default. But I didn't have a problem with it, so I went ahead and uh, just continued and I made the fork a little bit better. Um, you can always leave out the generated files by using your git ignore. So I just went ahead and I'm going to show you exactly how to use my fork of the generator Chrome extension to get GruntWatch working uh, with your Chrome extension development. Okay, let's get started using my fork of the Chrome extension generator that has GruntWatch support. And I keep my Chrome extensions in a Chrome extensions directory. Let's make a new directory, call it dummy hyphen ext and let's switch into it now to install the generator got to go to my fork let's copy and paste the npm install because as you can see it's quite large we're installing it directly from github so let's paste that in there Okay, the install is going to go through and I'll be back just in a few seconds. Okay, the install went just fine. Now, let's, I'm going to take a look at, we're going to list out the, the package just to make sure it is indeed my fork. So we're going to list it. Now it's globally installed and as we can see here, it is indeed coming from my fork. Uh, you might have it previously installed, so we just want to double check there. That's why I did that. Now we're ready to actually use the generator with Yeoman, and the command is going to be yo chrome extension. We're going to get the wizard that pops up immediately. We're going to accept the defaults for the first two. So we're just going to call it dummy ext. We're going to take the, this default on how to describe the extension, my Chrome extension, take that. Now when you get the next prompt, you want to, ex to select the browser action here. And a browser action and a Chrome extension is basically these guys over here. They show up over here. It's going to make it easy to demonstrate the um, the fork. So let's accept that. This, I'm going to just not accept any of these in the Yeoman Wizard. And it's going to go through the install. And I'll be right back. Alright, Yeoman install just fine. As we can see, there's a directory structure. I'm going to talk about that in just a few seconds. Let's go ahead and load up the extension. Chrome extensions is the way you get to this screen right here. And we're going to load unpacked extension. I should mention that developer mode needs to be checked. And we're going to load unpacked extension. 
I'm already there. There's my Chrome extension directory. Dummy ext. We're going to go to the app folder. It needs to have this manifest JSON to work properly as a Chrome extension. Okay, so it's loaded, and you might not have noticed, but this icon has showed up. There's nothing in there. I'm going to start up Tmux because we're going to want to show some multiple windows. Let's split that pane. Let's take a look at the directory structure that Yeoman installs, and we installed the Chrome extension or loaded it from this app directory. That's what we're going to focus on right now. The pop-up HTML is what you're seeing when we went here. So there's nothing inside of it right now, but that is the main folder. There's the manifest JSON file, which was set mostly when we ran through that wizard. And there's a styles and scripts directory. Let's start developing the extension by using Gruntwatch over in this right pane. Start up Grunt Watch. Switch back over here. Let's go into the pop up HTML. And I'm going to add a hello world. Save that. Also going to go over and edit the main.css uh, file, the SAS file. And instead of transparent, we're going to use light gray. I'm going to save that file. Okay, over here we can see that we had our grunt watch kick off. And what happened there is that everything is being compiled into a main.css file. And I'm going back to the pop-up HTML. As we can see here, we have one link to a main CSS file. Let's also go back here and see if these changes went in. And they did. We have a gray background and a hello world. Okay, let's add another SAS file to see how Gruntwatch works with multiple SAS files. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make another SAS file called another SCSS. Now the hello world is a H1 tag. And let's make that background light blue. Let's save the file. Okay, over on the right pane, you see the grunt watch kicked off. And let's check out that change to see if that change went in. And it did. We can see here we have a blue background on the H1, and we still have our gray background uh, as the main background. Okay, so what's happening here? Let's go over to this pane and, and see a little bit of what's happening in the grunt watch. What happens in the grunt watch is it takes everything in the app styles directory, every SAS file there. It compiles it into the temp, .temp directory styles. Then the app styles main CSS, it's right here, gets removed. Then there's a concat task in Grunt that takes all of the .temp styles and combines them into app styles .main CSS. So in this way, going back to popup.html, we never have to add more CSS files here. We are only going to use the one link, we never have to change that. Everything magically by Grunt Watch is going to get compiled into that file. We can make as many SAS files in the app styles directory as we like. Okay, what about 
coffee script support. Let's add some coffee files and let's refresh the the tree here. We see another CS, another SCSS. I gotta stop saying that um, was added here. But let's add a popup.coffee file. Oops, looks like I can't add a node here in nerd tree. Let's uh, just do it by hand here. So pop up dot coffee file and let's just add a basic alert here. And we're using coffee syntax and let's save the file. Okay, now we're not having anything happen over here in Grunt Watch. Probably need to add a restart Grunt Watch rather. So I'm going to go and save the file again. And there we go, the Grunt Watch kicked off. And we have a popup.js was created. So let's also go and test that popup.js. And here we have the alert coming up nicely. And then we have the popup. Let's add a second coffee script file to see how that works. And let's call that another dot coffee. Same thing here, let's just name it. The name of the file and Grunt Watch did kick off over here. See that? We got the, that's working. We didn't have to restart at that time. So it's a bit of a hit and miss. It mostly works when you add new files. So there's not, you're not going to be restarting the watch has too much. But if there is a problem, know that you need to first start by restarting the watch file. Let's see if the another JS was automatically loaded in. And, oops, okay, it was not loaded in. Let's see that. We get the pop-up JS and then just a hello world. So let's see why that didn't happen. And that didn't happen because in pop-up HTML, we need to add additional JavaScript files to the pop-up.html under this build JS directive. So let's add another JS, save it. Let's go back, retest the extension, get pop-up JS. There's another JS right there. So now it's working and we have the hello world. Okay, so everything's working. Our grunt watch is working just fine. And this is how we're gonna develop. We're gonna develop in this app directory. And when we get the extension where we want it, we're gonna do a grunt build. So let's get right into that. I'm gonna close down Vim here, let's close down the watch. Let's run grunt, build. Okay, the grunt build finished without any errors. Let's test the grunt build by going back to the extensions page. Let's remove this extension. Let's load now instead, not from the app directory, but from the dist directory. We've got the manifest JSON there. Open it up. Let's go over here and test it. We got pop-up JS, another JS, and we have our background. So it's working just as it was in when we were developing in the app directory. Let's take a quick look at what happens in that grunt build. You can read through the entire output here, but it basically just has some some of the best practices like CSS minification, it will uglify, it will do all the best practices uh, that we have right now for front end development will be in that grunt build. And you don't have to think about it. That's what's so great about Yeoman. Let's quickly take a look at dist pop-up HTML. You can see that that build we saw earlier will compile down to one pop-up.js script. Isn't that cool? That's all done by the, the grunt build. So if you want to do Chrome extension development, you want all the goodness of Yeoman and SAS and CoffeeScript, check out my fork of the Chrome extension generator.